Baseball is dead. Rest in peace. Baseball is dead is uh, presented by Factor. Fuel up for your fall routine with Factor's no prep, no mess meals. Ready in just two minutes. Get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month with promo code BID50 at factormeals.com slash BID50. Uh, it's a Thursday, which means it's family feud day. And also, uh, it's a Joseph day because we didn't get Joey on Monday, which means he is here today for Family Feud. Joe, um, it, who who would you like to team with? I'm going to leave it up to you. Um, it's safer that way. For Family Feud today, who would you like as your partner? I won't take it personally. Hey, De- if it's Dallas not broke, broke, don't fix it. No, no, no. Dead. I've I've. I've I've stepped back. I have stepped back. There's no need for a choice. There's no need for a selection. Sounds I, like I think I Joey saw, in Dallas. Lock I think it I in. saw something. I think I saw Joey something in where Dallas I'm going to be. Up, uh, I need, I need to be the one today. reading the questions. That's what needs to happen. I should be the one reading the questions. Joey in Dallas teaming up later in the program for family. Feud. I didn't study today. Very excited for that. Uh, that's going to be a great segment. Um. Just kind of like how the Cubs had a great game last night. No hits. No hits for the Cubbies. What an outing. What a day. What a team. Uh, <laughs> what a this, split. What? what a split. That's that's well, what this whole outing was about, was the split. Will this be, put it this way. All right, let me ask you guys this question. I will, I will rephrase the question and the topic to open up the show. Which team to miss the playoffs entirely will be the greatest disappointment based on their expectations coming into this season. The Atlanta Braves. Ooh. <laughs> Dallas picking a team that currently sits in a playoff spot, but the Mets just a half game back, riding a seven-game winning streak. Okay, lock it in, the Atlanta Braves. Uh, Justin Havens. They'll pick something safe, you I think it's going to be the Dodgers ultimately. What? Come on. Whoa. Come on. Whoa. You said you said relative disappointment, relative to expectations, didn't you? What team is going to miss the playoffs entirely? Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. I miss her. I miss her. Okay. Um, (laughs) I mean, it's got. What a collapse that would be. Jeez. It's got I mean, it's got to be the Braves then. It's got to be the Braves. Ooh. So Damn, both, Joe! Guys, welcome you, back. I to mean, you both you both think the Braves are going to miss the playoffs? Joe, Probably. I don't know if you've been watching what's going down in New York. Jay Hay and I have been at the forefront of what the Mets have been doing oh all season long. God. We've been here to tell you how exciting this team is. Nobody Jesus. wants to listen, and that's fine. That's fine. They got, they got the Mets, is, Mets fans the have Atlanta embraced Braves me right now. because Mets fans don't forget. Mets fans that listen to this podcast are like, Jared was the only one that took a stand against these bullies. They were saying that the Mets were boring, the Mets weren't good, yada, yada, yada. I took a stand. And uh, it's, I'm not going to say it's been rewarded just yet. Half game out. We've got uh, about three weeks to go, three and change. But uh, the Atlanta Braves, it's not like the Braves are playing bad baseball. They're not slip sliding. They're just not playing as good a baseball. I believe they have the, the best record Mets. in baseball since August 10th. But you the Braves? Know that. Yeah. Well, Mets are tied in the win column. They're a half game back. And one game behind them in the loss column. Uh, Joseph, your pick. Which team would be the most disappointing to miss the playoffs based on the expectations coming into the season? So is the question would be or will be? I mean, if I mean, you're they're saying the Braves who are in a playoff spot. So they're, so they're saying in. they're predicting they're saying the Braves are not going to make the playoffs. That's, that's what they're saying, Joe. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. That's Should the I just rumor. Pick the Mets. I don't know that the Mets had high expectations. They didn't have high expectations. You're right. I mean, I would probably just have to. uh, It's tough. I would, you know, I would say (laughs) if you have to pick one, Mm -hmm. Mariners. Yeah, that's fair. Why has no one picked the Cubs? The Cubs is would be a great pick. Cubs and Mariners, same boat. Is is there any? I think it's like. But they got to combine no hitters, so they're already happy. I mean, that's a win of the season. They're already happy about that. If yeah, you get a combined no hitter, you can't be sad about your season. That's amazing. Yeah. In the history books. 
I mean, I do think I do think we've zeroed in on the three possible answers, though, at this point, right? Because every other team that's going to miss the postseason or likely to miss the postseason had something of muted expectations entering the year. Like, I think it's it really is either the Cubs, the Mariners, or the Braves. Because I don't. What think about the Blue can... Jays? Ah, uh, I, I mean, there were question I guess marks. Me, they were talking I, I about. I didn't have Vlad. particularly high expectations. Yeah, I would. I would say it's tough for a team to have centerpieces that they're looking or potentially talking about building around or should be building around to start to have conversations about moving those guys and then still feel like you're in that window of expectation. That's, that's tough. That's why that gives me pause from a Toronto Blue Jay perspective. And they didn't like, really add anybody big in the off season. No, but like the rotation is stacked. Um, yeah, they missed on Otani fine. But like, if I told you going into the year, that's like, all right, you're going to retain your nasty rotation. And Vlad is actually going to have another big year offensively. You'd be like, oh, so we're going back to the playoffs. I, I, I think you can classify that as a disappointment, uh, for sure. How about it? Let me, let me toss another team out there that hasn't been named yet. The Rangers. Why, why not the Cardinals? The Cardinals? What about the defending World Series champions? Why not the defending World oh, Series champions? Oh, my God. It was right there for us. <laughs> the I don't Cardinals? know why I never thought of that. That's probably number one. It's got to be number one. The Cardinals? The Because they added a bunch of old guys in their rotation? No, the Rangers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Rangers. I guess, yeah. I mean, if you count, I wouldn't even count this, but it's like winning the World Series makes having a bad year the next year easier for a fan yeah. base. You're less disappointed. More forgivable, I, yeah. I, I also think like, again, the, the preseason projections are what they are and we can put whatever weight we want to put in them. But I think like the Rangers were almost universally viewed as the third best team in that division to start the year. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. and, and I mean, th that proved to be pretty spot on uh, pretty in the accurate. end. But yeah, but I think like, I don't know, I, I it's an interesting question because I feel like you can carve out. Well, interesting arguments for lots of different teams like the say what you want about who the Cardinals signed the Cardinals invested in their present with a I mean Sonny Gray cost a lot of money the other guys were like veteran filler types or whatever Gibson Lynn that kind of thing Sonny Gray was a pitch to win now they were built around Goldschmidt and Arenado and they're they're gonna miss the playoffs and they bought at the trade deadline like that's a lot of stuff to not end up in the postseason that's fair that's fair. I think I think the answer is that there's no correct answer. I mean, like we yeah. can talk about, you know, three, four teams that fit the description. Um, it's more of a personal preference on who you personally believed in more going into the season and where they ended up and I, who's the bigger disappointment. I will say, though, like of all the teams that we've named and right now, I understand that the Braves are in the playoffs and not out of the playoffs. But if it were to play out that the Braves miss the playoffs, for me, they are the only team that we've mentioned so far that were in the considered in the inner circle of World Series contenders, not might make the playoffs, not wild card, you know, factors. The Braves were were on the World Series list, and we know there are lots they of reasons are. why that's not going to play out. And maybe they still are. But in the world where they miss the playoffs, that is a disappointment relative to expectations on a level that I don't think any of these other teams can really claim. That's fair. Um, all this talk about the playoffs got me really excited about underdog fantasy and, uh, you know, sprinkling some scratch on certain individuals come October. That's always a time honored tradition. Um, underdog fantasy wants to make it a lot more interesting this postseason. I know that at least for me, now that I'm tweeting out my picks, my winning picks, Justin Havens, dude, I was all over that. I, mm -hmm. I was like, what? Whoop. Hey, he had Stevenson and he had Carlos. Who Santana. was it? Carlos Santana. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, Santana went deep. He sure did. Yep. Easy money. Listen, when you when you're a baseball brain like this guy, it's not really uh, not really wagering anything. It's kind of just, you know, tell me tell me what, what my winnings are. I'm, I'm literally going to be waiting with bated breath for my picks for today for today's pick. Today's going to be like I'm playing on difficult today because as uh, we talked I about in the pre-show, the there's only, I think, four or five games that start 640 or later. So I usually try to um, throw out some of the, the night games that so people have time to to get in on the action with me. Um, I'm not selfish. I'm not going to throw out some day game picks because then you might not see it. So I, I put my picks out for the people. It's more for you guys than it is for me. 
Uh, but Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. Playing their pick'em game is as simple as selecting higher or lower on player stats, strikeouts, total bases, home runs, and so much more. Make entries of all baseball, or you can mix and match across your other favorite sports. You can win up to 100 times your money, and it's a ton of fun. As we just mentioned, I went, uh, I think it was one and a half total bases for Stevenson and uh, Slam Tana. Um, hit on both of those guys. I'm not, I'm not going to do these like crazy three, four, five leggers. I'm going to keep it to like two or three, three max, but usually two just because we want, we want winners. We want winners. Don't overdo it. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you sign up with the promo code Jared. That's J A R E D to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash and a special pick on underdog. That's underdog fantasy promo code Jared. Super fun. Super easy to do. Um, but yeah, you know what else is super fun? Combined no hitters. <laughs> Tell them, Joe. Are they? It's one of the most one of the most rarest achievements in sports. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I mean, can you guys even remember the last combined no hitter? I doubt you could even remember it. That's how rare it is. Didn't the Marlins do? I wonder if Astros? that's why I can't remember it. You can't. You can't. Astros remember. did it. Yeah, in the well, playoffs. That, that uh, yeah. Hey, hey. I don't know. I, that was a where were you moment. That was the last one in the playoffs, 2022, combined mm-hmm. no hitter. So it's been over a year, almost two. And yeah. you got to tip your. I'm gonna I'm gonna commend the manager of the Cubs, Craig Council, for taking out the having the balls to take out the starter in the seventh inning because it's risky. Because then you got to get the bullpen to get the no hitter. It's easier to get no hitter if you just pitch one pitcher, but two, three pitchers. Yeah, we got to give a lot of credit to the skip. It's big time. It's big time. Yeah. That's what everyone wants to see. Yeah. Um, kind of like the Mets. The Mets are big time right now. I know we uh we tease a little Mets. We did a big Mets conversation yesterday. We don't have to keep blowing them today unless you you obviously want to. I'm happy to do that. Uh, but the Mets completed the sweep of the Boston Red Sox last night. Uh the Red Sox completed the sweep of the Boston Red Sox last night, if we're being honest. I mean, what was it? Three bases loaded walks. Uh, in the eighth, I mean, we suck. We just fucking absolutely mailed it in. We don't want to play anymore. I, every year, the Red Sox are just like, oh, the se- there's games in September? What? That's crazy. We just shut it the fuck down the second that the calendar turns to September. Um, so we're done. We're toast. I put it to bed, Dallas. I know you asked me that yesterday. I said, if they lose tonight, I'm putting it to bed. <laughs> they lost. They got swept. It's, it's put to bed. That's it. Done. So you were Dunzo. you were ready to put him to bed. They were ready for bedtime. You let them stay up late. That's what happened. You let them have ice cream. Yeah, they didn't deserve ice yeah. cream. You let them have ice cream, and this is what you get. I didn't. This is what you get. I didn't let them have ice cream because that would be a reward. Oh, per se, I I let them finish their their show that they were watching. It was like, Dad, there's 15 minutes left. Can we just finish the end of the show? And I was like, Fine, 15 minutes. That's it. Yeah, that's all you got. If it's 15 minutes, what then that's it. Anything longer than that. And then they took their iPad and they went to mm-hmm. bed and they pulled the covers over mm-hmm. their head and they're like, fuck that guy. And they watched it. Yeah. We're, we're still watching. <laughs> fuck that guy. We're still watching. <laughs> yeah. 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 That sucks. I don't, don't let me talk myself That's into it though. Cause I, I put them to bed. They get the White Sox this weekend though. That's the thing. And they still have three games against the Twins. Like, is it possible? Yeah. But like mentally, I'm, I'm gone. I'm gone. So. Well, that's, that's, thank the you to the Mets for putting gotta, me out of my misery. You got to watch it unfold. Some level of irony or whatever that uh, that the Mets consoled your season. Right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You just don't see that um, very often. But I, like I said, I mean, Mets fans were very polite in in shooting me in the chest. They were like, "Listen, you, uh, you know, we got to take you out. Your season's over, but we're gonna we're gonna give you a proper burial." I was like, "Thank you very much." Uh, it was a very cordial um, transaction. And I said, listen, if, if it was going to be anybody, I'm happy that it was you guys. You know, like if, if, the, if the Yankees um, were the ones to cover the dirt on my casket, then I would have been a little upset. Or if it was another divisional opponent, it kind of gives you a sour taste in your mouth. But being that it was the Mets and like they need these games and I actually want to see them get there. I'm happy that my life was given for them. Um, so that's yeah. how I feel about it. It's very if this, poetic. If if this happens at the hands of the Yankees, 
You probably have a really terrible taste in your mouth, an ugly look on your face. For mm-hmm. the Mets, though, it's probably just more of a grimace, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, folks. Folks. <laughs> the rumors aren't true. He's still got it, folks. He's yeah, still he's got still, it. Yeah. Depends on the day, but today's one of those days. Um, Fernando Tatis ha- half returned. Let's see. There's got to be a Donnie O call out there somewhere on that one, huh? Yeah, it was a great one. I heard it live. Oh, you were watching? Tatis is back. Yeah, let's check it out. Here's Donnie O. On the ground, in left field, base hit. Oh, Fernando's back, and he's back big. Padres, walk it up. Nando gets it done. So, uh, Jake, the, the Red Sox fan in me right now, I don't know if you remember this. Um... 2005, July 31st, 2005, trade deadline day, 2005, the major league debut of Jonathan Papelbon, who would go on to cause bodily harm to me. Uh, On this day in July, Manny Ramirez was held out. I believe it was a a one o'clock game, two o'clock game, something like that. So the deadline passed during the game. And Manny was held out of the lineup because the Red Sox were trying to trade Manny. I believe Irvin Santana was the intended target. And trade deadline passed and no trade of Manny Ramirez. Yet he would be traded later in 2008 for Jason Bay of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, But Manny comes up. He pinch hits in the eighth inning. Base hit up the middle. I believe it either tied the game or gave the Red Sox the lead. And Don Orsillo used the call. Manny's back and he's back big so that fernando tatis jr walk-off call was a, actually a callback to don orsillo's call of manny ramirez in 2005 fun fact mm-hmm. shout both out to Donnie Ries, both dominican both allegedly did steroids a I lot of both accidental comparisons there joe Yeah. Similar haircuts a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, he's still doing it. He was what, what oh, was yeah. that like fucking home run derby that he was doing the other day? I yeah, mean, he's like, always he's, playing in like oh, he's, he's playing in New Zealand this year. What? Yeah, Manny Ramirez, Hit Manny Ramirez existing and doing what he's doing in the world is uh, is like you walking through a dream and you turn down one alley and it's mm. fucking it's Manny taking BP. You're like, what am I doing here? How, how did I get here? How, why is Manny Ramirez in my dream taking batting practice? Because that's what he's doing now, just randomly. Mm. He's just yep. taking batting practice. Anywhere see, when he the, is. When the A's signed him, were you teammates or no? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. I've told the story multiple <laughs> times about me and Manny on this podcast. About like there was some sort of like religious experience that you were going to have with him? Oh, that I had with him, not was going to have. <laughs> had. <laughs> Full blown. Can you can yeah. you tell that story again from yeah. maybe the folks? Uh, trust that me, dude. Never heard and it. I had a um Yeah, it was spring training. My arm had fallen off. I had gotten the news that my arm had completely fallen off, like shit's hanging off the bone, dude. Um, you're probably done. I was like, oh, cool. I'm probably just going to go home now. And I got a bottle of Jameson waiting for me. So that's how that's going to go. Um, and I get home and I am sitting on my bed with my fucking roommate, Brian Wilson. And he's like, you know, trying to talk me into like not hammering this bottle in a minute. And I'm like, ah, fuck that, buddy. Grab me the straw. This thing's going down. And as I'm looking for the fucking straw, like I'm going to bend it and put it in the my phone rings and I look at my phone and I look at, <laughs> I look at Wilson and I go, what the fuck? And he goes, what? And I showed him my phone and it's fucking Manny Ramirez. Right. And he's like, I go, what do I do? He goes, you fucking answer it. It's Manny. And I was like, Oh, what? so I was like, Hey Manny. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Poppy. Where are you at right now? I'm at home, man. Got some, got some tough news. I, I know. I know. I, I talked to the trainer. Hey, uh, you know, I, I have my, I have my priest here with me. 
can you uh you come back to the field? I was like, uh, I am higher than giraffe pussy right now, Manny. And I mm-hmm. have already started drinking. That's what I'm thinking in my head. <laughs> and, and what came out of my mouth was, yeah. Whoa, where? When? Right now? <laughs> he was like, yeah, come back to the complex. So I came back to the complex and me and Manny Ramirez and his traveling priest sat in the equipment room of Phoenix Municipal Stadium on three separate buckets of baseballs and held hands for about 20 minutes while his priest prayed over me. And Did it work? Um, no, Jared, it, it, it didn't, it, it, it did not, <laughs> things did not work out. Uh, but you know what? The sentiment behind it, the sentiment behind it is what mattered. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. so that's, that's my unreal Manny Ramirez story. While I'm telling you that story, I know we got other shit. I got to tell you this story because this just happened to me yesterday. Okay. And I spent a lot of time forgetting that I played baseball. A lot of time forgetting that I played mm-hmm. baseball. Yesterday, I was reminded that I played baseball. Uh, I'm in the booth. We're getting ready to go on TV. We're getting ready to start the, the show or, or recording. And the fucking booth door like flies open. Doesn't open. It flies open like Kramer type entrance. <laughs> and <laughs> fucking it's King Griffey Jr. Who walks right into my booth. Mm. And he fucking flung the door open and just and he's pointing at me and he's like he's like yo yo and i'm like i look at chris next to me and i'm like and chris is looking at me and he his fucking face is he's white he is white and i look at and i'm like the kid what's up bro and he came down fucking dabbed it up big old hug started like shaking and i was like <laughs> i'm like i don't know what's going on right now what is happening right now and him and i like we just started talking hey i was like what are you it's like are you shooting the game here what do you you know because he's a photographer um and he was like oh no man he's like i'm just I'm, I'm back here at the coliseum you know he's like this is debut baby this is where i got my first knock blah 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 and and i was like yeah no i know we've been you know we're rifling through stuff talking about this shit and I'm getting ready to talk to, we're going to go on and talk with Dave Stewart, right? Well, Stu's already on and he's in my ear. I've been talking to him before we go on. So I tell Stu, I'm like, or Stu asked me, he's like, hey, who are you talking to, man? Who's in there? And I said, <laughs> I said, Stu, it's the kid. And he was like, oh, shit, man. You tell that lucky son of a bitch. And I was like, I'm not saying that. And, and as I say that, Griffey is looking at me and he's like, and I go, I'm, I'm talking to Stu, Dave Stewart. And he's like, he's like, oh, he's like, you tell that man. He's like, he, he laid one in there for the kid, you know, had to get him going, just had to get him going. And as he's saying that to me, <laughs> Stu's in my ear going, I gave up that motherfucker's first hit. That son of a bitch. And like they're like <laughs> basically talking shit to each other through me. Through and, and I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> like, I'm not. Is it street legal that I say this? Because I'm saying it for Stu. I'm saying this for for the kid. I'm not. This is not for me. Is this okay? Do we all understand that? Like it was just a, uh, it was a fucking dude. I it was a surreal, very surreal moment. Because like I'd never. I don't expect that. That's fucking King Griffey Jr. Yeah. Who walked into the booth and is talking to me and dabbing me up and talking about like ba- like shit that I've done and I'm just like this is not normal. This is not real. This is not real. I, I just saw a TikTok today, this morning, I think, of like Ken Griffey Jr.'s retirement story where he had obviously come back to the Seattle Mariners and just one day decided, I'm done. Like, that's it. I'm good. Kind of like how Joey Votto told the story of his retirement where he was just like sitting in the dugout and he just looked over and he was like, I'm done. And that was it. Uh, Griffey basically did the same thing where there was no retirement tour. There was no like, all right, one more game, put me in the lineup and I'll do the tip of the cap and all that. He was just like, I'm done. And then hopped in his car and drove from Seattle three days across the country back home to, I think it was Orlando is where he lived. 
uh, and was just like, yep, I'm done and drove home from Seattle three days. Yeah, it was it was insane to watch uh, the reaction because like I'm trying to play it cool, right? <laughs> and I'm not playing it cool inside. And then I just watched not- everybody in the press box like as he walked into our booth, I can now start to see people gather around outside of our booth. And then he walked out of our booth and went down the <clears throat> went down the hallway to go hang out with Riz and Simsy. And you could just see people just flowing by the door, trying to fucking find him, like looking for him where he was. So uh I'll I'll put this out there because Dallas is on the road. So with the home Wi-Fi, it skips. And then he's on his hot spot. So then there's a delay. So I feel like with Family Feud, we're kind of fucked with Dallas. Oh, that's that's a fact at this point. Yeah, he's like he's like one of the news reporters that is like over like in Baghdad and like he's talking to CNN and he's like, yeah, so Dallas, you know, um, I hear a lot of uh, explosions behind you. What do you got? <laughs> he's just in stock yeah in so behind, yeah it's uh <laughs> yep seems to be a lot of activity going on back here yeah yeah there's uh there's <laughs> there, there's the, <laughs> the international delay is uh <laughs> there it is whoa <laughs> we're gonna get dallas to safety we're gonna try and try and re- reconnect with them later in the program um be safe, Dallas. Uh, so I guess I guess we're going to have to we'll do family feud with me and Joe. So if Dallas has until noon, then we'll just run for another 20 and get these topics out of the way and then send Dallas on his merry way to the Oakland A's game where they're playing. Seattle Mariners, the Mariners, because Karen Griffey Jr. is in town. Love that A little woo action today on the bump. Yeah. How the fuck did you guys give up 16 oh. runs to the Mariners last night? <laughs> uh, pretty easy, Joe. Pretty easy. When you have a player come in and put forth, I, I think it was tied for the worst relief appearance in, in Oakland A's history. That's not good. Yeah, that's, that's not good. That's how that, that's <laughs> how that Are you talking about when Jansen you, Junk? When I wasn't going to put a name on it. I mean, you can look in the box score, you know, <laughs> that's a good name. Uh, yeah. 11 <laughs> runs in the last two innings of the ball game, Damn. Joe. That's also a way that that happens. Mr. Junk yeah. didn't even get an out. Seven earned no. runs that an out. I'll, 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 I'll put a name on on it. Jansen <laughs> Junk is the first A's pitcher <laughs> since Blake Stein, who we all may remember as part of the Mark McGuire trade return mm. on August 31st, 1998 to allow seven or more runs without recording a single out. So there you go. Yeah. I can't make yep. fun of the guy. I feel like that's how I would do by pitching the big leagues. So <laughs> not making fun of him, just stating what happened. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Historical context. It's always. I also important. would not record an out before I gave up seven plus runs, but I've not been given the opportunity. Jansen Junk did. Mm-hmm. He did yes. have the opportunity. That is yes, correct. Yeah. God bless him. Uh, Dallas, your guy, Matt Chapman, Chapstick, Chappy. Oh, oh. 151 million. Off the road. It was so good. It was so good to see come across. It's, you know what? I feel, um, I feel vindicated just because I wanted Bobby Witt Jr. to get breaded up. These are two very different players, clearly. And it was just a matter of time before that was going to happen. But the Matt Chapman breaded up tour, uh, I think at times looked like it may not happen to the extent that it has. Six years, 151. Um, I know a lot of people would say, hey, love to see that happen in the Bay. Uh, would have loved to have seen that happen on the other side of the Bay. I'm with you. It didn't. But the fact that it did happen at all, Right? Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Uh, Matt Chapman got his payday. The sure platinum did. player got his payday. Mm-hmm. Right next to his uh, former Oakland A's infield brethren. Just a couple of platinum glovers just out there doing the damn thing. Two dudes just getting paid by different organizations. Um, 
Speaking of retirements, Elvis Andrews will officially retire as a Texas Ranger on Friday. Jay, hey, do you have any historical nugs for Elvis Andrews and his Texas Rangers career? Well, yes, but my I was going to ask the question, how do we feel about this? Because because we kind of did a whole Matt Kemp thing, right? When he retired yeah. as a Dodger. And I'm I want to know. Wait, what's Dallas laughing at? What's funny, Dallas? <laughs> Nothing. I'll tell you. Oh, okay. Well, it's not. I mean, it's not. I wasn't trying to be funny about nothing Andrews. related here. No. Nothing oh, related. okay. All right. Very serious topic. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, I don't know. I I know we were like doing kind of a bit with the Matt Kemp thing and just having fun, but like maybe maybe it was me getting to see some of these rangers teams up close in the postseason um or maybe i'm just being you know ridiculously biased but like uh elvis andrews like retiring as a ranger feels it feels correct like i i don't know he was a seminal player a key player for some of the most important rangers teams ever uh and played for them for 12 seasons um the number of players who play 12 seasons uh, with a team and, you know, endure pretty meaningful contributions in a playoff context and, you know, a, a best team in franchise history context uh, is important. I know it's only a two time all star or whatever, but, uh, you know, we're not talking hey. about the Hall of Fame. We're just talking about retiring as a Ranger. And, and Jay, hey, um, I, I appreciate that you point that out because this is a dude who I, I want as much respect put on his name as humanly possible. This is a dude who, when, when I was playing, you, you were hearing it. Like, this dude's on the way. He's coming. He's going to move Michael Young over to third base. Like, that's how good this dude is. Okay, he showed up. Fact, he was that good. He was that good. Um, and then I watched him in the twilight of his career as an elder statesman make his way to Oakland, trying to rekindle it. And the level of professionalism that he approached every single day with is unparalleled in my experience. And I'm talking <clears throat> from grabbing the young guys and just showing them how to go about things in the clubhouse as a ball player, how to prepare, how to prepare not only on the field, but prepare your body, take care of your body away from the field, why to be investing in things like this. You need players like that. And specifically, if you have somebody coming from a Latin American background that has done a great job of communicating not only with his fellow countrymen and other um, Latin speaking players, but also can be that conduit and the, the mold that, that brings together the two sides of a clubhouse like that, that's huge to have, man. It is so huge. And Elvis has been that dude really his entire career. And I and I uh, I just love to see him go out under the umbrella of a Texas Ranger and wearing that wearing that logo. He deserves that. Uh, Jared asked for a nug. I am going to deliver on that uh, for Elvis. Uh, players with fifty plus uh, fifty or more triples, a hundred or more homers, three hundred or more doubles, and three hundred or more stolen bases. There have only been forty two players. Uh, in Major League Baseball history in modern era, so since 1900, to achieve those marks. Um, and while there are plenty of people recently, not plenty, but some people recently who have done it who will not make the Hall of Fame, well over half of the people who have ever done that uh, in baseball history are in the Hall of Fame. So uh, he's not going to get there. I'm not suggesting that he belongs there, but, um, you know, tip of the cap on a great career. Yeah, I mean... He's got over 2,000 hits in the big leagues. Yep. yep. Yeah. Like I, yeah, you know. if you throw that qualifier in and add 2,000 hits, there's only been 34 players to do that with all the other stuff that I said. So, yeah. you know, a lot of qualifiers, but he was around He's, long enough to rack up a lot of stats, and, and you know, that, has, with, that had value. Are you guys looking at his baseball reference page right now? Do you, mm -hmm. do you have that pulled up? I am. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. All right. Well, then never mind. Oh, okay. I mean, I, can, <laughs> I cannot look. I didn't study it. Yeah. Well, no, I was going to ask, where do you think he's at on the, uh, cause I, I don't know. Where do you think he's at on the, uh, on the war list? Like, is he oh. right oh, at I the know. Baines meter just below the Baines meter? Oh, I like, don't what, know. what would be your guess? My guess is that in his career, 
Elvis Andrews has a career war of 28.7. I'm going to say, I think you, 32. 30, uh, 32.3. 34.2 is the answer uh, per baseball reference, which is obviously the source for the Baines. Yeah, that's what I said. 34.2. Yeah. Um, yeah, career high of 5.4 in 2017. Yeah, it was a big year. Oddly enough, his one of his two all-star appearances came in a year where he had 1.2. Uh, <laughs> so you never know sometimes. Yeah. He was knocking on the door, though. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And trust me, I would have liked to see him, you know, have enough in the tank to to cross that threshold and maybe give himself a chance at the Hall of Fame. But, you know, we're also talking about a guy who, you know, was having a little trouble moving the needle there at the end. I'm, and yeah. you know what? Given that he played for the 23 White Sox, I bet he's feeling OK about not participating in the 24 White Sox experience. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Jay, hey, tell me about some uh, underdog profit boosts because NFL season's back. Yeah, it's good stuff. So um, today uh, is Thursday. So we've got a uh, the kickoff of the NFL season. It's big. We've got a 30% promo to celebrate that. Your Thursday 30 token, uh, as of this listen, is live. You can apply your Thursday 30 token to any qualifying entry to boost your profit by, you guessed it, 30%. So that's big. Ravens, Chiefs tonight, start of the NFL season. It's one of many promos available. Uh, Also, sign up with the promo code Jared. That's Mm. J-A-R-E-D for up to $1,000 on Underdog. That's Underdog promo code Jared. Mm. What games do you think I should target for my picks, Jay? Hey, today. Ooh, for, on tonight's slate. Yeah, it's a good question. Obviously, as you said, you were limited. I don't know. I kind of, I kind of like the opportunity. I know I was, you know, kind of seemingly down on them or whatever. It's not mm-hmm. really the case, but kind of like the Braves' opportunity to feast on some Rockies road pitching. Yeah, um, that could be a fun one to get in on. Rangers bats are hot going up against Anthony, a righty pushing a five year. Anthony Rendon yep. home run. That would be big time. You got to have that. balls, but I, I, I think he gets it tonight. If he doesn't get it tonight, he gets it by the end of the weekend. I what mean, does he need? Is he chasing a milestone or just wants yeah, to hit first one? home run of the season? <laughs> yeah, since like August of last year or something like that. First it's crazy, man. Season. Yeah. How much did he be- make it? 30, 35, 38? Not enough. One of the most underpaid players in Major League Baseball today. 230 yeah, plate appearances, zero homers. I mean, at the end of the day, like, it's just baseball. No doubt, man. I uh, Whatever. Yeah. Family first, he's, dude. Family first, played, then, then home runs. Five seasons with the Angels. Can you believe it? It's gone by in the blink of an eye. Five. This is his fifth season with the Angels. He's got 22 homers. Somewhere in my phone... <laughs> Jesus. Is a video of me in Dallas roaming around the streets of San Diego when that news broke, being like, "Breaking news: Anthony Rendon to the Angels. This is fucking huge, man!" <laughs> like, <laughs> man, oh, what a pickup! What a pickup for them. Yeah. I'm gonna try and find it. If I don't have it, like Bryn has to have it, or maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> feel like she's since moved on from the baseball world. July 1st. Really? 2023 was the last time he hit a home run. I mean, that's when was, crazy. When were we there? It was December of 2019. It would have been Dallas. Yeah. Rendon hasn't hit a homer since July of last year. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. man. Until tonight. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Great. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just going to have a good laugh. 
I or, feel fucking terrible. Yeah. I feel terrible about laughing. Like, uh, God damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. So fun. <laughs> Jay, you're such a fucking dick. <laughs> I didn't even bring him up. I, I, I didn't even put it. I didn't put him in the rundown. I didn't do anything. Just having oh, some good or organic fucking fun here. Random Rendon stray for no reason. <laughs> I'm going to find this fucking video. I want to know Aaron what our Judge has 69 was. homers since he homered last. <laughs> Jesus. December 11th. December 11th. We're we're like aren't we outside? We're like outside in front of uh like a fuck dude. This was right after I got the key to the Bernie Brewer slide, wasn't it? I got I, it's not working, but here it is. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's I, I don't know why it's a still image. Is it a fucking snap? It's because it's a, it's because it's a repost of uh, a barstool baseball video and they fucking deleted all of uh, our content. Oh, so they're all classic. just still images. Rendon to LAA seven year 245. But yeah, there's there's us spread it up. Chicken titties. <laughs> Oh, good for us. I mean, that sucks. I really would have loved to have watched. Like, why do they have to fucking delete that shit? Like, just leave. It's from December of 2019. It's, like, does, you know, is yeah, anyone you know, going to scroll back years on that Instagram page and be like, you know, it's funny. Dallas and Jared used to work here. What? Like, who cares? Just leave it there. The fuck? It's crazy. <laughs> You you know what's funny about all that is uh, I I can expressly remember a large number of people from that place talking shit on another large number of people who had decided to leave that place about how people that decided to leave that place just blocked everybody and you know boxed everybody out and their response was well, how immature is that like come on just get over it you can't and I don't know that we had even received the message that, yeah, we're done. And they were <laughs> removing yeah. shit, still slanging the merch for sure. Still slanging the merch, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, that sucks. <laughs> Solid. There's, there's some good shit. There's some good content that's just lost forever now. Cause it's deleted. Like our, our, uh, charity softball video. And, uh, where was that fucking Malibu? <laughs> that's live. What are you talking? That lives. Does it really? That lives. I don't know that it does, Dallas. People have people have sent that to me. I don't know. Oh, I, whatever. I'll find it if yeah. it exists. It's somewhere. Um, all right. Uh, do you have any final thoughts, Dallas, before we send you off to play King Griffey Jr. Seattle Mariners? Um. No. No. My Griffey story was probably going to be my final thoughts. Okay. But How do you think me and Joe are going to do today? I think Joe's going to surprise you. Why would it be? A I surprise? think Joe's going to surprise you. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Joe, why would it be a surprise? You mean I'm going to do bad? Well, because I, I'm, 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 I'm on to Joe. <laughs> I know what Joe does. Joe's a big slow player. Yeah. Oh, slow play Joe. Mm -hmm. That's what they call I it. I played so, one time and like set the record. <laughs> that is true. So. That's what I expect. I expect a fine performance. Mm. All right, Dallas. I expect, uh, I'm, I'm going to set, the, you know what? What? Uh, 221. 221. What's the record? And I'm going to, I'm a, 221 and a half, I'm taking the over. The single I'm round record, more. I'm pretty sure was whatever, I think Joey's correct. I'm pretty sure it's whatever he did. I don't have it handy. Uh, I could get it. Mm. Um, but yeah, actually I might not. I don't really want to play today. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Joe, just hang in there, all right? I know it's going to feel like Jay Hayes getting close to the end of the question. He's probably not. You just got to keep your listening cans on. It's Listen for the how, detail. So, how Don't how let him lead you astray. that cranium I am of a former big leaguer. <laughs> Guy had the mental toughness straight. to make the big leagues and throw a perf an actual perfect game. Mm -hmm. And the length of my family feud questions. <laughs> Rattles him to his core, Bur burrowing him to his, cr yeah, to his uh, cranial core. 
Mm-hmm. Not a time. I'm over it. There, though. I'm over it. The shit you doesn't. Sound over no, it. they haven't gotten a fucking timer yet. <laughs> I'm fine. Doesn't matter to me. Um. Oh, by the way, before you go, Dallas, um, your wife posted on TikTok that uh, she's now giving you words to sneak in to the broadcast. Uh, and this past broadcast, you snuck in uh, demure and mindful. Did she give you a word for today's broadcast to look for? Uh, no, she is not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I see you're lying to us. Okay. But, I, I see where this uh, line in the sand is drawn. Fucking, by the way, I absolutely nailed that. N- nailed the demure and mindful fucking nailed it i have never been more proud i said it and my partner looked over at me and went like this <gasps> like he was like you that was magic i felt really good about it felt really good about yeah. it just a demure mindful approach at the plate right now for the seattle Mariners. <laughs> you know it's <laughs> nothing too over aggressive just a <laughs> So you're not uh, going to tell us the word for today. I don't know the word. All right. I don't know the word. My my wife legitimately she she'll text me. She did this yesterday. She was like, "Hey, you ever seen this? Can you say this?" I was like, well, "Is it going to get me in trouble?" And she was like, "No. Look at it." So I looked at it. I asked some other folks around the the building. They're like, "No, yeah. Go for it." And I was I didn't ask them if I could say it. I, I asked them the, like, "Does that the have a fucking whole- organization like the a's organization has trickled down to full fuck it mode everyone no no. none of no i'm saying like like interns you know like like people like hey like you see these tiktoks going around this fucking trend like if i say this it doesn't have a like a double under layered meaning that i don't know that's going to get me fucking crushed is it and they're like oh no no so like no no, nobody else (laughs) nobody in the organization is aware that this is happening no yeah yeah Jared, remember during spring training, I got fucking coaches from everywhere that are like, "Hey, uh, that was about dropping a Rammy cackle right now, huh? <laughs> Throw a Rammy cackle in there, <laughs> a Rammy cackle." <laughs> so, so yeah, go check out, uh, go check out my wife's fucking Instagram and TikTok, where apparently she's going to be trying to feed me shit to get me canceled. Yeah, she's going to sneak a word in there. That's all I got. All right, Dallas, uh, go A's, and we'll see you on Monday. I'm gone. That's Dallas Braden, voice of the Oakland A's, with the worst internet in Stockton, California. Bar that was nine. nice to sort of speak with Dallas today. Yeah. We had to kind of guess, piece it together. <laughs> you know, I think we got there, though. Finally, the quadruple J hour. Oh, yeah. Quad J's letting it rip. Um... Are there any other topics? Uh, Yamamoto rejoining the Dodgers. Do you have anything on that, Jay? I mean, no, other than, I mean, I think this was the time, the best case scenario for when they were going to get him back based on uh, the lead up to, to this. So very interested to see what sort of um, buildup he can create uh, with three weeks left in the regular season. And listen, uh, not to ha- not to belabor this point over the course of the season, but nothing about Bobby Miller's start last night uh, gave me confidence uh, that this rotation is all that closer to being figured out outside of uh, currently just basically Jack Flaherty, uh, in my opinion. So uh, as it relates, at least to the postseason outlook. So what Yamamoto does uh, is uh, I think extremely important uh, on his return, especially with the glass now news also being you know, I, I wouldn't say pessimistic, but certainly not uh, optimistic in terms of his uh, getting back with a lot of the regular season left. Yeah. And now um, Kershaw's on the IL too. Yep. Yep. And I, and again, not to, but anybody I think who was expecting Clayton Kershaw to be a, a significant contributor uh, to a postseason push in 2024 was. I think deluding themselves and this really just is about the other pitchers and whatever they get from Kershaw, I think has to be considered kind of gravy. Um, if he's on the, I mean, who knows what, if he's on the postseason roster at this point, I guess we'll have to see, uh, not rooting against that, but Joe, what's your confidence level in Yamamoto being able to come back and be a key contributor for the Dodgers once the postseason starts? Um, 
It's tough to say, but I mean, it's Yamamoto. I, I, I expect him to be good. He's taking a ton of time off. Uh, it doesn't seem like they're rushing him back from my perspective. I don't know shit about injuries or what his specific injury even is, but it's not like the Dodgers need to rush him back. There's no real point to do that. So I'm guessing they probably took it slow and I'll probably be fine. But I mean, the Dodgers have been playing really well without their pitchers for the time being with Mookie ever since really Mookie got back. They've been scary. I mean, I watched the Dodgers game the other night where they intentionally walked a batter to get to Mookie Betts in extra innings. And he just had a fucking three-run home run. But like, when has that ever happened in the history of baseball? A player as good as Mookie Betts, they intentionally walk the guy in front of him. That would only happen on this Dodgers team because he's got Shohei in front of him. Just happened to fucking Aaron Judge this year, right? Who would weeks ago. Uh, did happen. Yeah, they yeah. first Soto. Yeah. yeah. Good point. That's dumb. But either way, it's a scary lineup. It really just comes down to how scary are you going to be scared of the Dodgers? Are you going to be in the playoffs? Which comes down to Yamamoto and Glass now. Yeah. Those are the two X factors. I'm kind of curious, man. Like, I know this probably isn't possible, but like the Dodgers right now with Mike Kopech being the closer, like how much they might be like, fuck, we should have just kept them as a starter. Like right now you'd want Kopech as a starter over a lot of these guys. Yeah. But that will never happen. Yeah, I'm still down about Bobby Miller. I, I thought he was going to be the, the next big thing. And he still can be. I guess he's young enough to turn around. But I thought that was going to happen this year. I thought he was going to take that big step forward this year and be like a top five Cy Young candidate. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was you, you weren't on an island there. He was about as buzzy of a pitcher, both for real life and fantasy, as, as there was entering the year. And then what's particularly wild about it is that the first start gave you no reason to be like, if anything, optimism increased after watching the first start of the season where I think I remember off, I think it was six scoreless with 11 strikeouts uh, and one or zero walks like it was an utterly dominant start and he just hasn't been anything close to the same guy since. And that includes, um, you know, not that I know the intricacies of what they worked on during his demotion, but like you usually when you miss significant chunks of the season due to injury or demotion or whatever, like you'd love to see a course correction upon return. And it just doesn't feel like that's happening at all. He's literally given up at least a homer in every single start since that March 29th uh, debut season debut. And that includes three homers last night and seven runs in five innings. So I know a lot of those came early in the start, but they lost 10 to one. Like he, he, he created a non-competitive game uh, for the most part right off the bat, and it's just not getting any better. What's even more concerning is that his minor league stats this season are worse than his major league stats. He's got that a 9.9 9 really ERA in single A, a 5.8 ERA in triple A. Not good. Yeah. Not good. As a, as a Braves fan, we've seen this shit happen all the time, bro. Rookie pitcher comes up. This guy looks lights out. He's amazing. He becomes one of your best starters. And then for some reason, injury or whatever it is, a year later, two years later, they're basically gone. So I'm not saying that's going to happen Anderson. to him, but. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still bummed about Soroka, to be honest with you. Yeah. Soroka. Ian Anderson. Yeah. Kyle Wright. Kyle Wright, yeah. Uh, but anyways, Dave Roberts has said that Yoshinobu Yamamoto will return to the Dodgers rotation on Tuesday. Uh, that game is against the Chicago Cubs. So all eyes will be on that start if you're a Dodger fan. It's crazy. I mean, like the, the adversity that the Dodgers... <laughs> I don't even know if you want to call it adversity. It's just I, to, to seemingly underperform not meet the grand expectations of the entire baseball community and still have the best record in baseball, you kind of just got to tip your cap. Like they they may not win over a hundred games, but it's still the best record in baseball. It's all relative. Um, but warmer, sunnier days are calling fuel up for them with factors. No prep, no mess meals, meet your wellness goals in time for summer. Thanks to the menu of chef crafted meals with options like calorie smart protein plus and keto factors fresh never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes so no matter how busy you are you'll always have time to enjoy 
nutritious, great tasting meals. Make the day, uh, make today the day that you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. Crush your wellness goals this month with dietitian approved meals and ingredients that you can trust. Make your day delicious. From breakfast to dessert, stay fueled with easy, nutritious options. Treat yourself to restaurant quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, and blackened salmon. Keep kitchen time to a minimum. Factor meals are ready in just two minutes. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Enjoy effortless support for your lifestyle. Choose from six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, Avoid meat or simply eat a well-balanced diet. Head to factormeals.com slash BID50 and use the promo code BID50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That is promo code BID50 at factormeals.com slash BID50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Um, all right, Joe. I think it's about that time. Welcome back to Baseball is Dead Family Feud. I'm your man, Justin Havens. All right. You're I didn't just hear any tuning- chirping from the Discord about this one. No, I think uh, they proud of themselves after fucking us last week. Yes, I think they that's are. absolutely one way to describe the situation. I think mm-hmm. there's a level of contentment there for, you know, not putting you guys in your place. I don't think it's like that, mm-hmm. uh, but I do think they were relishing their win a little bit. So, I bet they were, um, yeah. so what they vote, they vote the the discord votes on these. That's right. They answer the questions. Yeah. It's a it's a feeding frenzy, Joe. When we drop the questions, they love it. They love it. It's uh, great for the community. It's great for us. It's a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. Um, Who's going first? I went second last week, so I'll go first this week. All right. Joe, you're going to go first. Off. Joe can be the closer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Joe, can you pop those headphones off, buddy? Or mute or do what you got to do? Thank you. All right, Jared. Jake, are you ready? Let's play some feud. Jake, mm-hmm. do you have any uh, opening thoughts, anticipation for this this episode of feud? Uh, no, but I do have a format announcement. We're fucking done with the timer because every time I try to use it, it crashes and I have to keep changing how long it is based on the length of the question. So we're just going to do a clean three seconds to answer every question. That's it. All right. Uh, I love that. Uh, Jake cleaning up the back end there. I know there's been a, you know, let's keep them honest sort of thing. And, you know, Dallas just flagrantly violates that all the time. Every time. Yeah. Before I get Jared, question number one, just make sure you sign up with the code Jared to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash and a special pick on underdog. That's underdog promo code Jared. That's right. A few people in the discord asked. It is spelled J-A-R-E-D. Mm-hmm. All right. That's right. Yep. No doubt. Uh, all right. Are we ready? Yes. There are some meaty questions, so hang with them. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, question number one. What city in the United States would be best for an expansion team? Nashville. The White Sox are 32 and 109 after their win against the Orioles on Wednesday. Over their remaining 21 games, how, how many will they win slash what will their win total be? Three. With the minimum being zero and the maximum being seven, how many combined postseason rounds slash series with the wild card obviously counting as a round series now, will the two New York teams win this season? Ooh, um, one. When I say the first name, Mike, who is the first baseball player who comes to mind? Stanton. Without looking, entering play on Wednesday, where does Matt Chapman rank among NL position players in F War? Um, nineteenth. Thank you. That's a guess. I have no idea. 
Thank you. Yeah, you got them all in in time. That's for sure. Right, Jake? There was no nothing close there. Yeah. No, he's good. Uh, let's see. That's that's a in Major League Baseball or just in the NL? Uh, just NL, just NL. Um, there he is. All right, uh, Joey, put your put your headphones back on. Was I even close? No. Okay, Joey, can you hear us? Yeah. All right, you guys have a uh, a very competitive situation here, Jake. Check me if I'm wrong, but my math way off. Says, says that we are at one twelve through Jared's round. That is what I have as well. Great. So I'm supposed to guess the same thing, Jared, or different? No, no, no. You're supposed to guess different. If you guess the same thing, the same answer that he provided, you will hear an eh from my oh, voice. You okay. Else. And yeah, there you go. And you have to guess something else as quickly as possible. You have th- roughly three seconds to answer each question. Uh, really? So it has, yes, it has to be rapid fire. Um, right. That's what you said, Jake. Yeah, you got to go quick. Yeah. Uh, so you, so J- Jared got you 112, which means that you quote unquote Thanks, only need 88. Um, Thanks, brother. Five I questions. I Whenever you are, up. are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Question number one: Which city in the United States would be best for an expansion team? Uh, Nashville. Uh, Sierra uh, fucking city in the United States. Uh, Salt Lake City. The White Sox are 32 and 109 after their win against the Orioles on Wednesday over their remaining 21 games. How many will the White Sox win this season? Five. With the minimum being zero and the maximum being seven. How many combined postseason rounds slash series with the wild card counting as a round or series will the two New York teams win this season? Two. When I say the first name, Mike, who is the first baseball player who comes Trout. to mind? Mike Trout. Without, look, without looking, entering play on Wednesday, where does Matt Chapman rank among NL position players in F war? Uh, s- 12. Thank you. All right, let's take a look here. He was, he's sixth. I said 19th. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. I think I he was actually, no idea. I think entering yesterday, he was actually fifth. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. But the point, yeah. I, and I didn't know he signed the extension when I reached that, when I did that question. So that was just kind of timely in the news. I just yeah. was shocked, kind, kind of shocked at how high he was. Uh, well, it's weird. You look at the, you look at the war leaderboards, the first like eight guys are American League. Yeah, oh yeah 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 um all right let's go through it you needed 88 points uh which city in the united states would be best for an expansion team jared provided the number one answer with 57 that was nashville uh so both of you were on top of that after some hemming and hawing uh i'll let jake be the final arbiter there joey delivered salt lake city Third most common answer, seven points. So Portland. obviously, uh, Port, uh, Portland was the fourth most common answer oh. with, with six. Vegas. And, and I think some people were uh, maybe trolling, maybe getting ahead of the game and said Oakland. Uh, nine was <laughs> that was the number two it. common answer. Uh, uh, obviously, Nashville getting 57. No other uh, city got double digits. So uh, overwhelming there. Uh, Joey's seven points there brings the total up to 119. So still 81 points uh, over the final four questions. The White Sox are 32 and 109 after their win against the Orioles on Wednesday uh, over their remaining 21 games. Uh, how many will they win slash what will be their win total? Joey said uh, 37, which means five more wins. That was the third most common answer with 18. Uh, Jared came through with three correct um Mm -hmm. that was 22 that was the second most common answer so congrats Mm -hmm. to you guys on that four wins was the most common answer with 27 so a nice little spread there but joey picks up 18 to bring the total to 137 we're down to 63 points needed over the final three questions um third question 
With the minimum being zero and the maximum being seven, how many combined postseason rounds slash series will the two New York teams, Mets and Yankees, win this season? Joey said two. That was the third most common answer. Good for 24 points Mm. to bring the team's total up to 161. Jared said one round. That was the second most common answer. Good for 27 points. The number one overall answer was three rounds. Um, That was 34. Uh, So those were you guys got two of the three most common answers by far. Joey needs 39 points over the final two questions. When I say the first name, Mike, who is the first baseball player who comes to mind? Jared said Stanton. Damn. (laughs) Which was still the fourth most common answer, which is kind of crazy in its own right, given that's not really even his first name. There's Uh, two of them. Yeah, that's true. It could be the reliever. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Uh, Could be reliever Mike Stanton. Uh, Stanton was worth five points. Ah, Joey said Mike Trout. Number one. And that is the number one answer. Good Duh. for 51 points. You guys do it. We did it, at, Joe. You sure did. We that did brings it. you that brings you up to 212 uh, with Joey's answer there. And that's good because there wasn't a lot of points to be found on the sixth or uh, the fifth question. Uh, the Matt Chapman F war, which was obviously a difficult question if you were not studying Matt Chapman ahead of time. Uh, Joey said 12th that managed to get you three points. Um, yeah. So the overall total 215 nicely done, boys. Jared, you said 19. 19. Yeah, you got one point. Um, go. So the number one answer was 10th uh, for 12 points. Obviously, an incredible spread there. But uh, yep, 215 for. J and J to bring wow. home the family feud crown here on September 5th. Nice job. We guys. did it. We did it, Joe. It's fun. Fun the game, man. If I was playing every week, this would be a whole different atmosphere. Very, very interesting to see how Dallas reacts to somebody stepping in and bringing home a dub in his absence. Yeah. I'm not sure what I mean, all this uh, retirement talk is about, but they won one together. Joe and Dallas won one. They, they like broke the record together. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Maybe he was just, you know, sensitive about some family feud stuff. But yeah, hopefully we be. see him back on the on it next week. Otherwise, we're going to have if he's really retired, we're going to have to pivot to doing it on the days that Joey is on the pod. Yeah, we're going to have to do him on Mondays. And Dallas is going to just have to sit through it and watch. Yeah. He's going to try and be the guy who asks the questions. I know it. We're going to yeah. have to let the discord speak about that, whether they want Dallas on the mic or not. But I don't know I, why I certainly he don't. keeps saying that he's retired. I don't know what prompted that. Well, I think it was a reading of his statistics being worse than yours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually, I actually think there's like a one to one correlation there. I think that's what caused it. Yeah. yeah that, <laughs> that's too bad because I, I think <laughs> Dallas is very good at family. Well, his stats lie. were very impressive in their own right. And yeah. certainly we're just really beginning to build our database. There's plenty of time to improve or turn those numbers around if he mm-hmm. wants to make it a competition with his partner. But right. You know, would love to see him back. Uh, maybe the Discord, if they have time, uh, could get on adding Joey's stats. Now that he's participated twice, we should have official documentation for everybody. That would be super appreciated. Yeah. Also, we're teammates. That would be like right. Manny getting pissed at David Ortiz for hitting 50 home runs. And yeah. Manny hit 42. It's like, we're both, we're both very good at this. Well. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Not as much as I'm going to enjoy going to Fenway tomorrow night. Thanks to Game Time. Uh, Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats. You don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Thousands. I'll be going to Fenway tomorrow night. Little double date action Fenway Red Sox White Sox I don't know why Fox picked up Red Sox White Sox on Saturday but they did um, so you can get tickets to that game as well on game time or any game that you would like to go to 
Um, game time picks. The curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. They've got all-in pricing. You toggle that feature, and it shows you the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. Get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. The lowest price guarantee your game time will credit you 110% of the difference. The game time ticket coverage your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry today. Take guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use the promo code BID for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use the promo code BID for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Uh, what time is it, Joe? Game time. That's right, brother. That's right. Uh, what's coming up on um, Baseball Doesn't Exist, the YouTube channel? We got a new video coming out by the end of the week. And by that, I mean Sunday, probably. Okay. It's going to be a... You're going to have to wait and see. Ooh. It's going to be featuring a lot of guys in it. A lot of guys. A lot of guys. Not alive or dead? Win. Most of them are alive. Okay. We like to keep it. We like to keep it a little modern. I'll tell you one story that uh, you guys might have heard that we cut out of the video. Okay. So maybe this will give you a hint. But back in the Dizay, Phillies legend, blanking on his name, but he's one of those old Phillies players from like the fifties, who was like one of their goats. Name okay. a goat from the fifties in the Phillies. Anybody? Uh, Robin Roberts. Nope. Uh, Richie Ashburn. Richie Ashburn socked a I'm sure you guys heard the story when he fucking hit a lady in the face with a foul ball, nailed her right in the face. So they stopped the game so the medics could come in and take this lady out of the stadium. She gets on a stretcher. They say play ball, hits another one, knocks her again, dude, while she's getting stretched out. The same woman? Same woman. God damn. Right in the knee. Broke her nose, then broke her knee. Both broken bones. Yep. Damn. What are the odds? What are the odds that uh, a baseball will break your bones two for two? I don't know. Yeah, Denard Span hit his own mother with a foul ball, like a bad one, too. I don't know if really? you guys remember that. I don't remember that either. Spring training 2008? Yeah. A screamer line drive. It's actually insane thinking back. It was like five years ago, but they didn't even have nets on the dugouts. Like fans were sitting front row on the dugout, no net. That is kind of and crazy. These foul balls are going 110 directly at people. Yeah, that is pretty scary. Hit his own mom. Thankfully, she was okay. But yeah. I want to say that there is a story about uh, if this is about like people getting injured in the stands. Jim Rice, I think, hit a foul ball into the stands in the 70s and it hit a little kid. And then he ended up going into the stands. The player who did it carried him in his arms and down into the clubhouse, into the trainer's room. Yep, I think that was a girl too. Little girl. I think it was a boy. <laughs> Jim Rice saves fan. That was an amazing, amazing move. It, you know, he went in the stands twice in his career. It was a boy, I correct? Yeah, someone uh, stole his hat, right? Yeah, someone stole his hat in the stands. And he came, the whole fucking Red Sox team went and fought in the stands. Yeah, beat his ass. Yeah. Jim Rice don't play. You know, he's a, he's a real one, Jim Rice. I love the guy. I know he thinks that we're weirdos, but I love Jim Rice. 1978 American League MVP. Um, all right. Uh, Jay Hay, any nugs to send us into the weekend? Uh, most definitely, yes. <clears throat> JJ Blade Day Bay Bay, mm -hmm. uh, 62 extra base hits, but only 55 RBI. That struck me as kind of odd, an odd combination. Um, the fewest RBI by an A's player in a season featuring 62 or more extra base hits is Ricky Henderson with 61 RBI in 1990. Uh, so obviously a, a leadoff batter thing, but we'll see. We'll keep tracking that important one. Uh, Alex Verdugo, his current 83 OPS plus. I know that's now become a hot button topic or you know has been simmering, I guess, for a while. But Verdugo... And Boone's reluctance to stop playing him, I guess, or the front office's reluctance to upgrade him or call up Dominguez or whatever. Uh, I know you guys are taking some satisfaction in this, but uh, 83 OPS plus would be tied for the second worst 
by any Yankees outfielder in the wild card era who received at least 550 plate appearances. I looked that up. I know that seems arbitrary, but it's like typically really for the Yankees, it's very rare to see a guy be really bad and receive an enormous amount of playing time because the stakes are typically so high for the Yankees and the threshold to play for them is typically very high. Uh, so that is odd. The only guy who has a worse OPS uh, in the wild card, you know, uh, dynasty era for the Yankees was Ichiro Suzuki in t- 2013, who was 39 years o- old and obviously toast at the time. Um, was that with Chuck the Marlins? N- <clears throat> no, I'm saying it's with the Yankees. Like, uh, uh, uh. yeah, like a, a a Yankee outfielder who received this much. Verdugo um, only worst uh, by Ichiro Suzuki. Just wait till he gets some fucking batting gloves. He's not allergic to, brother. Yeah, that's man. true. Yeah, just got to. You gotta remove Keep those waiting, tattoos that he's allergic to, too. Yeah. Oh, that could take a while. Be painful, mm-hmm. I heard. Uh yeah. never had a tattoo removed, but heard it's not good. Yeah, it's um fun. Shoda, uh, Imanaga, and Zach Gowan uh last night both had no hit uh outings. Shoda's of seven, Gowan's of six. Uh it's the first time since August 14th, 2021, uh, that multiple pitchers have delivered starts of six or more hitless on the same day. Uh, that was Tyler Gilbert and Matt Moore. Gilbert's no hitter, uh, full nine inning no hitter. Matt Moore tossed six hitless innings that day. Uh, the Cubs offense uh, once again went off. It's the fourth time this season the Cubs have had three players each get at least three hits in a single game. And all four of those instances have come in the last 12 days. And three of the four are against the Pirates. Um, Jackson Merrill's 82 RBI, uh, thanks to his three run homer last night, uh, are the most ever by a Padres rookie, uh, that broke a tie with Benito Santiago's 79 RBI back in 1987. Gunnar Henderson, um, not only tied, I'm sorry, broke the record, uh, held, I I believe by Cal Ripken and Miguel Tejada for most homers by a shortstop in Orioles franchise history. He also became the fifth shortstop in MLB history to produce a 35 homer, 15 stolen base season, uh, joining A-Rod, who did so six times, Trevor Story, who did so back to back in 18 and 19, uh, Lindor, who also did it in 18, and Fernando Tatis Jr. in 2021. Uh, The Astros had a very brutal start by Spencer Arigetti yesterday. and that is now two starts of nine plus runs allowed without getting out of the first inning uh, since the start of last season for the Astros. Uh, the rest of Major League Baseball has zero such starts uh, over that stretch. A um, few look ahead nuggets here to some stuff that's going on today. Brian Wu um, is against the A's. Uh, he's faced them twice this season. 10 and a third, three hits, zero runs. Batters are three for 35. Uh, it's an 086 batting average against them. We'll see if those fight A's can turn that around. Ronaldo Lopez, I know him going on the IL for a second, threw us off the scent uh, a little, but he still has a two flat ERA through 22 starts this season. There have been only 18 instances in the wild card era of a pitcher having an ERA of two or lower through 23 starts, uh, and the only instances of that uh, by a Braves pitcher uh, is Maddox in 95 and 98. So something he won't win the Cy Young and isn't even the best player on his own team, but that's quite an incredible season for and Ronaldo you Lopez. Think, you guys think they won't even make the playoffs? <sighs> that's not how I interpreted the question, but whatever, that's fine. I'm pro Mets. I'm all about the Mets now. Meet the Mets. Um, mm. Yep. What Blake Snell is also uh, back. He is at a well, not back. He's going to be starting until uh, by the time we podcast again, a 1.30 ERA over his last 10 starts. He's the only left handed pitcher in Major League Baseball history to have a 10 start stretch featuring 25 or fewer hits allowed and 80 or more strikeouts. Um, His August specifically was also unbelievable. Uh, He had 53 strikeouts and 16 hits allowed uh pitchers uh, i tweeted it out so i'm not going to read the whole list but i tweeted out the list of pitchers with a single month featuring 50 or more strikeouts and fewer than 20 hits allowed what i will tell you is that it's been done about 
a dozen times in Major League Baseball history, and Blake Snell is the only person ever to have three such months in his career. Uh, he's did he had one in 21, 23, and again in August of 24. So just when he's going, there's kind of nothing like it, um, as we've outlined before. And then the signature nugget, this was my favorite one uh, of last night. The Cubs obviously threw a no-hitter. Uh, Isak Paredes committed three errors in the game uh, while the Cubs were throwing a no-hitter. He is the fourth player in Major League Baseball history to commit three or more errors in a game where his team threw a no-hitter, uh, joining three people I don't think anybody listening to this podcast have ever heard of. Rudy Holswit for the 1903 Phillies, Bill Hunnafield for the 1931 Indians, and Jerry Pretty for the 1952 Tigers. So if you're going around Chicago today and you happen to hear someone say that Paredes pulled a pretty, you know, mm. you'll know what they're talking about. Mm. There you go. Um, before we get out of here, we're going to talk about our winning factors for some series this weekend. Uh, clearly, I'm delusional. Mm -hmm. Clearly, uh, I'm sick in the head for still oh, no. paying attention to the Twins and Royals who are playing against each other this weekend, Justin Havens. Yep. They, they sure are, are playing against each other in a series that will take place at the K Kaufman Stadium. Uh, the factor for me is that these offenses over the last two weeks have both sucked. Uh, dating back exactly two Thursdays ago. So we're talking about 12 game sample for the Twins, a 14 game sample sample for the Royals. Um, the Twins are hitting 229 as a team with a 663 OPS. The Royals are hitting 223 with a 676 OPS. These two teams can't hit for shit right now, and they're playing against each other. So when I look at the, the Twins overall offense, it's basically Carlos Santana, who's like 38 years old. Like, that's, that's their guy. Uh, and with the Royals, it's Bobby Wood Jr. Um, now that Vinny Pascatino is is uh, pretty much out for the rest of the regular season, like Bobby Witt is the guy, not just like the guy. He's the only guy. Uh, so if the if the Royals are going to take this one, they're going to need Bobby Witt to uh, step up and be the offensive star as he has been all year, because it seems like offense is going to be at a premium in this three game set between two teams that are vying for a playoff spot that ha both have one. Um, but they are lobbying for that fifth spot over the sixth spot going up against each other this weekend. Wow, man, you brought up offense. It's almost like you and I have been potting together kind of on and off, I guess, for seven years mm. now, um, because I also zeroed in on offense, but for a completely different series. Uh, I looked at the Guardians going out west, continuing their road trip with a three game set against the Dodgers. Um Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, I'm interested in this, uh, broadly speaking, because I think it's a great test for the Guardians uh, to go up against uh, a team like the Dodgers. And, you know, as I've outlined previously and won't go into um, my expectations or, or emotions as it relates to the Guardians are 100% tied to what they do in the postseason at this point. And uh, I, obviously, for obvious reasons, the Dodgers are a great test. What I think the factor is going to be here. Uh, is kind of twofold. A, uh, it may seem simplistic, but to me, this is just two totally different classes of offense that on some level is obvious. If you look at c overall season offensive performance, I, I don't think it, I think it obscures the gap between these two offenses at this point, because if you look at the second half, uh, the Dodgers have a 764 offense, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> 764 OPS which is tied for fourth in Major League Baseball, and Cleveland has a 677 OPS, which is 23rd in baseball down there with the Pirates and the Mariners. Um, and I think this is unfortunately going to be a situation where the Dodgers offense ultimately, A, exposes the gap between these two offenses and kind of bludgeons Cleveland a little bit. And also, I just don't love the pitchers specifically that Cleveland is going to be throwing against the Dodgers uh, on Friday and Saturday. Uh, I know the expectations are what they are for Matt Boyd and Alex Cobb and that they were kind of 
last minute deadline type ads. I don't love the the combination of very little swing and miss, uh, which is what Boyd and Cobb are bringing so far this season and probably will continue to bring uh, against that Dodgers offense that's going to trot out, obviously, the three MVPs uh, and some real depth there. So an interesting test for the Guardians, but I think ultimately the main factor will be the uh, the Dodgers superior offense. Love that. Uh, Joseph? What series are you looking forward to this weekend? What's going to be obviously the, the Atlanta Braves? Now, mm-hmm. I mean, I missed yesterday. I guess you guys just sucked off the Mets for three hours. That's weird <laughs> because I don't think they're really deserving of that. Okay. Um, I guess as a Braves fan, we should be nervous right now. We're down, we're only up a half game on the Mets. But to be honest, I'm like more confident in the Braves now than I've been in a while. Uh, we're playing the fucking freaking Blue Jays, and it comes down to. The pitchers. I don't really have a big takeaway other than the Braves are going to win, and I'm looking at the the probable starters right now: Max Fried, Schwellenbach, Chris Sale. Those are three starters you feel good with, right? I would agree. I mean, have you seen Schwellenbach's baseball savant page, Jared? He's been better than Paul Skeens um, over the last X amount of starts, right? And this is our what is he? Our fifth starter? Maybe you put him ahead of Morton. So this whole um, kind of rhetoric going around in the baseball world where it's like the Braves, you know, kind of forget about them. They're not that good. They're injuries. It's just not the same team. Be fucking careful because this Braves starting rotation is better than it's been in the past since, I don't know, than I can remember. Like the past three years, four years, even 2021, the starters we have right now are better than all those teams. Easily. And Chris Sale's the best pitcher in the league. Max Fried has not been that great compared to it usually, but it's Max Fried. Ronaldo, Jay Hay just talked about it. Charlie Morton, Wiley veteran, playoff legend. And now Schwellenbach, who's been a god over the past two months. Maybe God's little much, but amazing. He has been criminally underrated. I will give you that. It's undeniable. And the bullpen. I mean, the Braves, the Braves, I the Braves have the Fifth best starting pitchers and the third best relievers. I think still they're ranked seventh, uh, second in overall pitching this year. And um, yeah, so I'm just kind of pissed off. Everyone's talking about the Mets like this is some crazy fucking thing. Like I, the Mets are going to go away like they always do. Mm. It's pretty much, it happens every year. They go mm. away, they get hot, they go away. Mm. They're going to go away, Jared. I don't know. I mean, you know, I ride with the with the Braves, but I don't think the Mets are going away. It's kind of oh, late they won, for that. They, they won kinda, seven games in a if row. It was, if it was June, I'd be like, all right, yeah, maybe. But we've got three weeks to go. Like, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> That's plenty of time to go away for the Mets. They've blown. Do I have to remind you of 2022? No, you don't. I mean, I trust me. I'm and a Red Sox it? fan. I mean, you win beat. seven games in a row. Great. You beat the White Sox. You swept the White Sox. Then you played the Red Sox. And yeah, I mean, Jared already diagnosed them with some terrible disease they're mm-hmm. they're done they're dead they're gone maybe the uh, mets do get in i just don't think like the braves the way they're playing right now i think the braves have a better chance of getting the second or first wild card than missing the playoffs altogether like i wouldn't be surprised if we catch the padres and catch the diamondbacks that's fine i mean i'm just saying you just i don't know um you sound a little nervous which is fine it's okay it's okay if i was nervous i'd say it my man all right, no, that's fine. I believe you. You know I believe you. I'm your guy. Go Braves. We'll see. Jake's takes? The Mets will go away. Yeah, just hope everyone uh, enjoyed the quadruple J hour. You don't really get a lot of these, so mm. you might want to spin this one back, listen to it three or four more times. Um it's a great take. And what about Rossiel Iglesias? Like, who, I, this guy fucking hasn't given up a run in like three fucking years. Not in three years, but all year. Since He's like, been good. Since like June. He's been very good. It's a good call out. He's on my list to dig up a nug on. Uh, I need to do that because it's been a long time since the man allowed a run. I like that. All right, everybody, enjoy your weekend of baseball. Um, It's going to be a good one. Some big series. 
on the horizon and uh september rolls on and it's it's crunch time i'm it's it sucks that i have to ed- exit stage left here as a as a fan of a team that was in the hunt i feel like we no longer are but anything can happen jake anything can happen we'll see you guys right back here for more baseball is dead on monday we out Thank you.